the White House becomes a pandemic hotspot while the infected president tells Americans not to let COVID-19 dominate them. A candid one-on-one -on -one about the deadly health crisis and the presidential race, how has it upended with former Senate Majority Leader Bill Frist's life? He's a heart and lung transplant surgeon and host of the podcast, A Second Opinion. He joins me from Nashville. Start right there. How has this affected Bill Frist's life? Well, Larry, it's affected me like every, everybody else. It's changed my ways of communicating. I've still been able to be very active. I've had a son and a daughter-in-law with COVID, and thankfully they came through it well, and their children uh, had an infection as well. Uh, Nashville itself, for being a big a hospitality town, service industry town, has been devastated. Uh, things are slowly coming back, but it'll be probably second quarter of next year before there's real vitality back in the town. President Trump has given himself an A-plus for his handling. Polls show about two-thirds of American disapprove. Where are you? Uh, the president, first of all, our government, I would give a B in terms of responsiveness, and that's not answering your question directly yet. But I think in terms of um, response by Congress, stimulus packages in the past, looking after small business, getting money out the door, the warp effort to create a vaccine and the partnerships our government has done with the private sector, with the pharmaceutical firms, uh, very impressive. But the country has not done well with 4% of, of the population and 20% of the deaths in the world, 210,000 people, a million have died in the, in the world. We're not doing well. And then it comes back to the answer of your question. President Trump has not done well. Um, as commander in chief, his sole purpose should be at this juncture, the safety and security of the American people. And he's let us down. Um, he's, he has come forward and even just in the last week has said um, this virus you should not be afraid of. And as a heart transplant surgeon, as a cardiac surgeon, I would never tell a patient, don't be afraid of this virus. It is deadly. People need to respond. And in the response, he's told the people to do the wrong thing, that masks are not important and that social distancing really doesn't have the impact. What did you make of when we returned home from the hospital, uh, landing on the on the lawn there and then taking off the mask? Well, you know, um, the, in the big picture, and I, I'll put my position I had on, I think it was good he went to the hospital. I think he had a potentially deadly disease. We don't know what, the, he's right in the middle of it. He is still infectious. Um, I think it was good he went to the hospital. I think it was okay that he came home from the hospital once the doctors had cleared him, still infectious. My expectation would be that he, is, he pr protects other people in the hospital. I think um, the grandstanding and coming home was totally unnecessary, and I think the American people are very disappointed in seeing that five-minute pause with the cameras going where he, he clearly wanted to project leadership and that he's beat this virus, but that's not the right message now for the American people, the people here in Nashville to our own families. I think it was totally inappropriate. What do you make of this president? Well, you know, he, he has yeah. um, won a lot of the things that he said, um, and a lot of people don't agree with the things that he's put forward uh, in terms of his campaign initially. But if you look at the progress that's been made in stripping back regulations, making it easier to start a small business, he's done well overall, I think, with manufacturing jobs. Um, he has projected this image of, of leadership. Uh, I say all that, and I've been uh, broadly disappointed in the integrity and the trust into what I want my children and my grandchildren to look up to as a president uh, of the United States. And it really comes down to what's been manifested with this virus, which shows that he has been anti-science, that he puts hypothetical things out which have not been proven, and because his voice is so loud, it leads people in the wrong, wrong direction. So he's done a lot of positive things, but this lack of integrity and directness with the American people when we're talking about their safety and security has been disappointing. Well, from all of that, can I assume you're voting for Joe Biden? <laughs> Well, I don't want to get into what I'm voting for, Larry, at this point. And um, I think that we do have a choice in this particular election going forward. 
And I'm very hopeful in the next 30 days, the differences in policies will be articulated. I do think that the election will be determined in large part by President Trump and what he does over the next 30 days. A lot of people will be voting for him because of President Trump. And then a lot of people, most people will be voting who vote for Biden, Not maybe not most people, but a lot will be voting against what he has projected as president of the United States. White House is now a COVID hotspot. Does this surprise you? No, uh, sadly, it, it doesn't, only because every image that has been projected out of the most visited and most respected house in, in the world, that is the White House, has been one of disrespect for what science has said. This is not like we're just starting, where we didn't know if masks really worked, and we didn't know how transmissible but this is after a million people have lost their lives. We have the science. And yet, even at the beginning of last week, we saw people without masks, no respect for social distancing, with the commander in chief having huge rallies with tens of thousands of people together, not respecting the science. Um, it's sad. Uh, I was very hopeful that the president would use this as a pivot point and now show the empathy of the 200,000 people who've died in this country, the million people around the world, that there are things that we can do now. And if we don't do them, or if we continue to follow his example, there'll be hundreds of thousands of more people who die. What about the treatments, the treatment that he's received, including uh, monoclonal uh, cocktails, antiviral drug, things that the public isn't getting? Well, two, two issues, the equity issues of, of whether vulnerable people uh, would have gotten that treatment. The answer is absolutely no, because he is president of the United States. The doctors were very open because he was president. He got everything. Uh, the treatment has been very good. The remdesivir or the antibodies, uh, again, a fantastic therapy that we'll be hearing a lot more of. A lot of these monoclonal antibodies will come forward in the next three months. And I think that's almost equally exciting as to the vaccine itself. The dexamethasone, which is a steroid, is a high, high, high dose of steroid. And I, back when you and I first met, you know, 25 years ago, I used those steroids in my transplant patients. And they are very effective here, the science shows, but they can also show disturbances and manifest side effects of disturbances of, of um, impulsivity and lack of good decision making. When you have COVID-19, how long are you infected? You know, we think we say two weeks and some people say as long as 20 days. And that science is really being worked out today. But, you know, the best data today now is that from the onset of symptoms within two weeks that you're no longer transmissible. But again, it's, it's an individual thing. It depends on the initial viral load. And that's sort of a gross average. So we don't really know if you take a particular person, but we know on average about two weeks. How do you rate the quality of information that we get from Trump's doctors at the White House? Um, it's been so mixed. I do think uh, some of the media has, has been nitpicking it. I mean, these are regular doctors. They're not trained communicators. Um, uh, a lot of it is staged. You can tell it's been staged by the president's people. Um, so I don't want to be too hard on the doctors, and nor do I think that we need to know every single finding that is out there. So I'd give the doctors a, a, a B plus or a solid B plus. As a physician, I'd like to know more. But, you know, there is a limit as to how much you should get out to the American people. What's the fine line between what a patient can tell a doctor to say? Can the president say, don't say anything? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, having been in political office and been in that position, once you are there, it is generally expected that most personal information is going to be made public. With this president, we've seen a lot of withholding of information. You come back to his tax returns and he's been able to get away with it. In this particular case, I, I don't think that we need to know a lot more. We know it's a deadly disease. We know he's in the middle of it. We know he is still transmissible and, and, and what is infectious that other people can be infected. We know he's gotten the extent of the very best therapy that's out there to, today. Um, his care needs to be continued. He, again, he's sort of right in the middle of it and it is not over with. And, you asked about the, the White House projection from the, the, the back lawn and the steps. Um, he wanted to project that image that he has beat this virus and it comes back to don't be afraid of it. And that is the wrong message. Um, he is like every other person. The viruses don't know who they're attacking. They will attack anybody anywhere in the world. And no person is above this virus. And, and people need to know that so that they will wear their mask and take the appropriate precautions, which we absolutely know are life-saving. 
The White House reportedly is not doing extensive contact tracing for people who attended the White House celebration for the Supreme Court nominee. Is that a good idea? No, it's crazy. It, uh, given what we know today, where we know that contact tracing is one of the most effective uh, tools that we have in order to prevent the spread of disease. And we have a, a locus that is in the White House with as many as 20 people in the president's inner circle having been I infected. And this is exponential. It's not just one person infecting one person, and that's the end of it. One person can affect one person, five people, 10, 50, or 100. And when you start saying there have been hundreds of people through the White House who've had this exposure to this, this nucleus, this, this node of infection, and not be able to trace it as they fly back across the country is inexcusable. Boy, as a doctor, this infection must really drive you a little nuts, right? You know, I, I did trans, heart transplants and lung transplants for, for I know. 10, 10 years, and, and with that, the viruses were my enemy. I would actually give people the sort of steroids that the president is on, and the biggest concern is that a virus would come and, and take them out. So I have always been afraid of these viruses, and I have been trained in terms of virology and immunosuppression pretty heavily at some pretty good places, and I'm petrified of them. So I hate to see the leadership of our country come out and say, don't be afraid, don't worry about it, we're going to all be okay. Do you, uh, do you worry it'll get worse? Uh, I worry about a second bump only because of the flu. And the flu, the, the common influenza, uh, and everybody do get a flu shot. I've got mine. Just everybody, just go out and get your flu shot. Don't ask questions. Just go get it. Um, and I say that very seriously. With the flu coming in, it's going to be very confusing in terms of the symptoms themselves. And people, will, but we just hope that they'll self-quarantine. But will people get flu shots? Will they get the appropriate testing? More people will be staying indoors. And we know that this virus, it, once it's indoors, is more dangerous. It's more deadly if it's in a building than it's outside. And we know that increasingly people could be spending time inside. In many states today, unlike two weeks ago, we're seeing an increase in the incidence of this infection. I hope it doesn't continue, and that's why it's all the more important to do the social distancing, wearing masks, get a flu shot, what we know works.